Hey, how you doing today? This is OXDF, and I'm looking at uh, a Phoenix from Hack the Box, and specifically, I'm looking at uh, some source code analysis of a WordPress plugin. Uh, there's the Mini Orange uh, two-factor authentication plugin that allows. It's a WordPress plugin for uh, making you have to have one of those two-factor codes that you get on your phone um, that changes every 30 or 60 seconds. And uh, we've got access to the database here, but it's really slow. And so the database is huge and we can't just dump the whole thing. So we need to figure out what do we need to grab out of the database so that we can recreate those two factor codes and log in as the administrator and get WordPress access. And so we're going to download the plugin source itself. We're going to start digging through it and we're going to figure out uh, what we need to download. So um, this video was recorded several months ago when Phoenix first released. So uh, it might look a little different when the video starts, but uh, with that, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, let's go ahead and dive in here. Um, what I've got is I've gone to the website. Um, let's see if I can find I've gone to the website here and I've downloaded the WordPress two factor authentication uh, plugin here. Uh, it came as a zip file, which I then unzipped and I've opened up uh, VS code here. Um, we could do this in uh, a terminal with Vim and grep. Um, but when I actually find when you're doing this kind of stuff, having an IDE for jumping around from file to file can actually be pretty useful. So we're going to go with VS code today. Um, you can see here is all the structure, you know, the various files, et cetera. Um, I guess I guess an elephant is the PHP logo. I'm going to go with that. Um, there is one slight tweak I've made in here. Um, let's see, Control Shift P, and we do User Settings, um, and then I always forget exactly what it is because I don't, you know, you know, once you do this once, you don't have to do it over and over again. Let me grab my. Um, so if I come up here and search settings for uh, Workbench dot Enable editor dot enable preview. Did I misspell that? Editor dot enable preview. Okay, so this option right here, I've turned this off. And what this does is if it's checked, whenever I click on a new file over here, it's going to open up in the same window on top of the previous one, unless you do a control K to keep it. Um, when I'm jumping around like this from file to file, I like to have my various files all open up so I don't have to go find them over and over again. So I like to uncheck this preference thing. You can do whatever you like. Um, but I just want to make sure you understood why mine was acting that way. Um, the other thing I did was I went into burp and grabbed myself the copy of this is the request being submitted to send in the two factor token. So I entered uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and hit send. And this is the post request that got sent. Um, show you in burp, but th this text was small and this just felt easier um, since we don't need it again after this. So we're going to figure out how this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two gets processed, looked in the database and validated as true or false. Um, this will be false, but yeah, again, let's see. Um, to start, I want to grab some things out of this request to help orient myself for where I am in the code. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to control shift F to search across all the files. I'm going to paste this in drag this over here so we can all see it. Um, and I get two files here. So there's moth common login.php and 2FA pass login.php. And so I can see pretty quickly, this one looks like it's all HTML, JavaScript looking stuff versus these down here are referring to the underscore, the dollar underscore post object, which is the um, object of a post request. And then it's getting that my submission out of that. So here it's checking to see if it's empty or null, and here it's sanitizing it. But th that seems like we're a good place to start. So we'll click there and do a lot of sliding back and forth here as we try to figure out um, how to do this, uh, where you can also read it. Um, okay, so it is running sanitized text field on the value that gets submitted in the post request, and it's saving it as soft token. Let's go ahead and copy, control F, paste that. Um, you can see that that shows up 12 times here. Um, once before it gets set to null, um, here it's checking the length, to make sure it's long enough. We'll go ahead and skip through. Um, here it's getting passed to a function validate OTP token um, with look like email. Let's keep scrolling to see what else we find. Um, it's doing some checking to compare it to another variable. Um, here it's going into validate OTP token. In fact, you can see here, here, and here three more times, all each being passed to validate OTP token with a different value here. Um, that's kind of interesting actually four of those. Um, and then down here at the end, let's see, what's this? Do? Another validate OTP token. And uh, here is, oh, this is actually a function validate soft token. So, and that, that's what we're actually running in maybe. Not sure, we'll come back to that. 
Um, so I'm particularly interested in this validate OTP token field. Um, there's another thing though that I recognize, Let's see if I can go back. Um, where was I? This is email. Let's go to the next one. We had like four in a row. Um, you know, all of these things I recognize from the post request. Let's go back here. Um, this thing right here, request origin method, MO two factor challenge, Google authentication. Um, and if I, you know, move this out of the way, that's exactly what I have right here. Um, we could verify that it's checking to see what MO two FA login status is. Um, let's grab pull my window back here and grab what is this thing called uh, request origin methods so we'll see if we can find like a, pro a post request origin method um, so here we go request request origin method um, and it's being saved as mo2fa login status that's exactly what um, we have right here mo2fa login status and so ours is this right here so in fact if we know in our case um, without knowing exactly what all, you know, so we know that is set. Um, we know that's there. We don't know all of these things being passed in, but we can pretty much figure out this validate OTP token is what's gonna be called and it's gonna be passed in Google Authenticator. Uh, so control shift F to come up here. Let's see if we can find where this function is defined. Um, you can see down here it's being called a lot, but up here at the top, there's two places where it's being set, being called function OTP token. Um, this one is another one that's being called um, Interestingly, this one's calling the parent. Let's start with this one um, first, and maybe we can go back to the other one. So this one right here is taking in an auth type, which we saw from our previous one. This is, um, is Google Authenticator. Um, and it's comparing, I don't know what this MOF um, two, MO2 factor uh, is on-prem. On-prem means not in the cloud. That's probably us since hacked box isn't connected to the internet. Um, and we know the auth type is not soft token, and it's not, OTP over email, and it's not SMS, and it's not OTP over SMS. So um, we can feel pretty good that this is actually probably going to be true, and this stuff's going to be executed. If it's not, we're going to call the parent object, um, validate OTP token, with the same things. Um, if we come up to the top here, we can see we are loading in. Um, oh, see, so this extends uh, customer cloud setup. Uh, Control Shift F paste, let's put that in. That class is defined in right here in the other file we were looking at. So we can we can open that up and see that is the parent here. So so basically, if we go back, um, let's see. When we were searching for validate OTP, can I up arrow? Yeah, validate OTP token. So I had these two options where it's being defined. This one, the on prem, basically says if it's on prem and it's not these other things, then call this stuff. Otherwise, call the parent and do this one. So. We think we're probably in this on-prem one, so I think we're gonna stick there for now. Um, <clears throat> so where were they? Not send OTV, validate. Okay, so we're assuming this is true. We're going to include this file. We're probably interested in that. We're gonna create a MO2F on-prem redirect object, and we're gonna call on-prem validate redirect, uh, passing in the token, the current user, and the auth type of Google Authenticator. So we will copy that, control shift F, paste, and that is defined in on-prem, you know, in this file that we included, it's defined here. Let's click on it to open it. Um, so if the case is Google Authenticator, which is, we, it is, uh, we are going to call MF this function right here. And then I just do a control. I think it's in this, yeah. Um, because it's this, Doing it, that implies like we're within this class that we're working in. So it, that makes it likely that it's actually defined in the same file. And in fact, it is. Um, if we pass in the token here. Um, let's see, and we're gonna use the, so this oh, right here, this looks, <laughs> okay. So we are now passing in the user ID and the token. Uh, to, we're passing in the user ID to get their secret. And then we're passing in the secret and the in token into this verify code function. So this looks really like what we're looking for here. Because again, we're looking for what information do I need to grab out of the database so that I can create the secrets on my, or it's what seed secret information can I get out of the database so I can create my own OTPs. Um, so control shift F and I'll paste that in. And let's see what this is. More sliding back and forth here. Uh, using it, using it, defining it using it. So let's go to let's go to ga onprem.php. 
And so this get secret is going to call, it's going to get a key um, from get user meta based on this value. It's going to get a secret from get user meta based on this value of this, this thing. And it's going to use those two things to decrypt the data. Um, that's interesting. So let's get user meta. Control, control copy, control shift F. And um, you can see here 148 results. What if I put a function in front of it and I get nothing? Um, so one thing we have to stop and think about here is this is all the plugin specific code. Uh, but at some point it's gonna start interacting with WordPress and WordPress's bigger framework. Um, and so it's worth taking this and maybe going to um, here and doing a, what if we search for this and WordPress? And we have the get user meta function. Um, it's probably enough right here. Um, I know from just interacting with WordPress that there's a um, WP user meta table. Um, and so what we have here is a get user meta function that takes a user ID and a string that is the key. Um, the key is the meta key to retrieve um, and then you know returns the value. Um, but if we don't know that, let's say, so you know we have the function get user metadata meta, which calls get metadata with the string user here. Um, so let's check this out on GitHub real quick and see if we can dive in and figure out where it actually dives into the database. Um, so we have get metadata. Let's check that out. In fact, actually, why don't I do it this way? Why don't I um, get metadata and I'll center click to open it in a new tab. Okay, so that's going to call get metadata raw and then if it's going to return the value if it's not null. So let's open that in a new window. Okay, get metadata raw is going to check meta type, which is uh, user. I check meta type is not empty. That's okay. Let's not escape down. Go through these comments. Uh, some filters is array. Okay, it's going to do a cache get to see if it's in the cache. And then if it's not in the cache, it's going to update the cache. Um, now to update the cache, it's going to have to go get the object. So let's I'm, let's guess it's probably in here. So we're passing in here meta type, which we know from Boyba is the string user, and then the object ID, which is um, we'll back up here at the top. Object ID is the ID of the metadata, which we will have passed in. Do we have a user ID? Uh, let's see. What do we what do we pass in? the user ID. Okay, so it's that user's ID. Um, let's see, let's, let's dig a little deeper here. Um, and we're going to get meta table on the meta type. So get meta table on the user ID. And literally all that's going to do is append meta to the end. <laughs> so um, we're going to take user meta, it becomes user meta, um, is the table name. And then we'll sanitize it to make sure that's fine. Um, we're doing some things, some filters. Do we, so we cached, if it's not cached, uh, here we go. Select column from meta key value from where, yeah, so we're basically building a string. Um, from table, and we know table is, saw that above, is that get meta table. So that's cool. So now we know the table is WP uh, user meta. And that's what we're going to do. So let's see, what are, we're going to get out of the WP user meta table um, two different, a couple different values. Let's go back to our thing here. So we're going to need the um, the moth, the moth get off R and D string and the moth key. And so those are two values we're going to get, and then we're going to use them and we can actually, while well, we're here, we might as well figure out what the encryption looks like. Um, encryption.php. We saw that being AS encryption. Let's go in here. Decrypt data. So here we are, we're doing a simple AES 128 CBC. Um, it looks like the data itself, we base 64 decode. The IV is the first, um, for that it's gonna be 16 bytes. The next looks like 32 bytes is the HMAC. 
Um, which interestingly is not even used, it seems. Yeah, not even used, but okay, so we read that off. Um, and then we're going to take the rest of it and get the raw ciphertext and decrypt it and return the plain text. So um, that should do it. That's a quick uh, breakthrough. What we did is we went into the plugin source and we figured out the columns out of the, the columns and tables that we need to pull from in the database to get the information and how to decrypt it to uh, produce the key itself. Um, I, I won't go into it here, but you know, uh, the TOTP protocol defines how you take a secret and you use it with the time to figure out what the current, you know, what the current six digit code is going to be. Um, so it seems pretty clear to me that this is, that's what the GA auth secret is. Um, so we're going, this, this right here is going to get the secret out of the database, the secret or seed value out of the database. Um, that's the same thing that we put into like my two factor app on my phone. Um, and then this verify code is going to take the secret, generate what the current time is. I guess we can look at that real quick. Um, are we already in the same function here? Function verify code. Um, it's going to take the current time slice. Um, it's going to get the time divided by 30 seconds and then use that current time slice along with this algorithm to compare. Let's see, take the secret. I'm guessing it's going to take the secret in here we go. So we're going to this dot get code taking in the secret plus the time slice um, to calculate a code. And then we're going to compare the calculated code to the input code and return success or failure, I guess. So um, cool. That's pretty neat. And uh, now we know what we need to do. Source code analysis is always challenging, but it's a skill if you can master it and figure well, mastering it's hard. If you can figure it out and get better and better at it, you can make a lot of progress in um, not only finding bugs, but just figuring out what information you need to gather. So um, thanks for sticking around with me till the end, and I will talk to you next time.